Hey everybody, I'm back with another tutorial. Here we have a stock-free video of two tennis players holding old school rackets in front of a green screen. At least it should be a green screen, it's a little bit more yellow, but we'll key it anyways. Another holy grail in VFX is crowd duplication. It's very expensive to pull off and it's very difficult. It usually involves a 3D software like Houdini to pull off. It involves tons of comping and QC, but today I'm gonna to use Comfy for that and speed up the process. What I'm actually gonna do first is actually key the video and then we're gonna introduce the crowd after the fact. So let's get started. So I think what I'll do first is saturate the image since the background color is not actually green. It's more of a yellow. So what we should do is juice it a bit. And then we'll go through and bring down a primat. So a primat is a 3D keyer. It can basically key a spectrum of colors depending on what you pick. So hit A and then we can control shift and drag the cursor around and get rid of any of the noise that we see. Then I'm going to go back over here and hit clean foreground noise and then control shift drag. So this would be good for say like a core mat and then we'll do another key and get the fine details. All right, next I'm gonna get a key light. I'm also gonna plug that into the hue shift here. I'm gonna color pick the screen color. And key light is good for wispiness, so it can pick up wispy hairs pretty well. Like right here, it's picking up the edges of the hair pretty well in the phrase of her hair. And this doesn't have to be perfect here because our prime mat has the core mat that we want to use. And we're going to be putting this through our copy alpha, which means everything on this side of the copy alpha can be a range of values between black and white. And then I'm gonna do one more color key here. And I'm flipping through the RGB channels to see where I get the most contrast. Looks like the green channel I get the most contrast. So I'm going to put down a grade node and I'm not gonna put that through the hue shift. And then what I'm gonna do is punch it so that we have more and more contrast here in the hair. So next I'm gonna put down a shuffle node and we see that the green channel has the most contrast to it. So I'm gonna put the green channel into the alpha channel down here. Then if I hit A, we have the alpha that's now embedded into our image. So I'm gonna throw down an invert node here. And then I'm going to throw down another grade node below here. And then I'm gonna to try to, we'll set it to RGBA. And I'm gonna to try to clean this up just a little bit here. Just to get just a little bit more detail out of her hair. Cool. And then I'm going to mask in these wispy areas. And I'm gonna to have to need another invert right here. And then I'm just going to blur that mask a bit. And then another screen node, plug that in. Okay. Move in that mask a little bit. And let's get our copy. A pipe into the keys, B pipe into the shot, and then if we hit A, then we can see our alpha channel is officially embedded into our shot. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more pass here on the rackets, because this is definitely gonna be an issue. And I know I'm gonna tweak this later, but let's go ahead and just put a D spill node 
and this yeast build node is actually part of the nuke survival toolkit. If you hit S right here, you can see what's going on. It's a very helpful tool. You save a lot of time with this. So let's just leave it like that for now. Let's bring in a checkerboard. And then what we're going to do is actually track this image. There's a little bit of a camera move in here. It's not a whole lot, but it is significant enough to require a track. So I'm going to put a high pass down and I'm going to increase the blur size and the amounts here until I get enough contrast to show me the green screen ripples here, which I'm going to use to track. Bring down a mocha, plug it in. We want to make sure that this is set to auto alpha. And let's go into mocha. Alrighty. So just like I did in the last tutorial, we're going to circle these areas here. I'm going to hit Control G and it'll give me back the pen tool. And so these masks are going to track the image together. And I'm going to track this backwards and then forwards. It's tracked. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the last frame. And then what we're going to do is hit our planar surface tool. And then we're going to go ahead and expand the planar surfaces to the edges of the frame. And sometimes it's helpful to put right here where those edges are on what frame. So sometimes I just go ahead and write 53 right here for frame 53. Export track, copy to clipboard, control S to save, X out. All right, let's go over to Comfy. Okay, so here is our Comfy workflow, and I've basically combined two different workflows together to get our sketch to image, and then image to video, and then up res. The top workflow up here was taken from Mick Mumpitz on YouTube, and I provided a link to his YouTube video where he describes this workflow in depth. He uses it for storyboarding purposes, but I'm using it to get the sketch to video down. And this works really, really well. Definitely check him out. This guy's an amazing resource and he provides tons of workflows on his Patreon. And then I also provided links to all the safe tensors here. And probably the most significant safe tensor here we're gonna be using is this LTX V13B, which was just introduced very recently. As you can see, the sketch can be pretty crude. As long as you give an idea of direction on what you're looking for and a prompt, it will do its best to output something for you. And it's pretty quick too. So you can get several iterations before you find something that you actually like. And then what I did next was throw it through the Alama Vision. So Alama Vision is helpful because it immediately puts very descriptive text to an image. I'll typically just copy and paste areas here that I want to introduce to the prompt. I won't use the whole thing. And this workflow down here was taken from the LTXV custom node directly from the workflows folder. The name of the project file is right here, so you guys can open that up yourselves. So right here, I fed it a positive prompt from the Olama vision and then ran it through. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that no matter how many times I tell it to lock the camera, it still introduces a handheld camera. I'm not sure why. If anybody knows, please let me know because that would be a huge help for us to, in order to get the back plate to match the foreground plate. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this and I'll just stabilize it in Nuke. And then from here, we're going to run it through the upscaler and it's only going to up res it to 1280 by 852 and that's okay. What we're going to do in Nuke is blow it up and introduce a depth of field to it. So let's hop back over to Nuke. All right, so here is our crowd sim. Let's go ahead and throw on a high pass. And what we're going to do is actually stabilize this. And we don't need to up res this because we're going to be blowing it up and blurring it, but we need to put a reformat down before our Mocha node and a high pass just to help it out. Okay, so same as before. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control G here. And I'm just gonna get these areas up here that has a little bit of data to them. And the purpose of this is if we only track this bottom mass down here and then we stabilize it, it's only gonna stabilize around the fence here every other area is going to look wobbly. So this mask up here is basically an anchor and keeps it stable. I'm going to turn off shear and just track the translation scale and rotation. 
it's a weird concept to think that we're doing all this VFX work on AI generated images. So I'm gonna move the cursor to frame one, bring down our planar surface tool and then bring it to the edges here. And I'm gonna layer this as frame one. Copy to clipboard and close. I'm gonna plug this into the reformat node. And then what I'm gonna do is click invert right here because all a stabilization is, is an invert of the track. Let's pipe that in and let's take a look at it. So a couple things here, I'm seeing the edge of our mat. What I'm gonna do is hit the corner pin, unclick black outside, and then with our other corner pin, unclick black outside and then put a transform node down and just scale it up a little bit. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is put down a corner pin and then just even this out a little bit so the fence is straight. And then maybe even bring this down a little bit and give us some depth. And I'll show you other ways in which we can introduce depth as well. Okay, just gonna clean this up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is introduce something that will give us depth. The Midas tool from the Cattery is pretty good at this. What I'm gonna do is actually plug it in down here to the corner pin. I'm gonna view, and you can see we have a little bit of depth here to our audience. What we're gonna do is hit shuffle, Let's bring that into the alpha channel. Hit A. Let's introduce a grade node and just crunch that a little bit more here. Make sure your channel is selected to RGBA or alpha. And do this so it tapers off a little bit. And then what we need to do is actually embed this because what we're gonna do is use the Z to focus node. So if we select the ZD focus and we tell it to select the alpha channel, so it's reading the alpha channel that's being embedded from the depth pass. And it's usually in best practices to reserve this for the Z depth channel, but since I'm not working in a group on this, and just leave it to the alpha channel for now. So the focal point is here. If we move that and actually fiddle with the settings here a bit. You can see that we actually start getting little fake depth of field here. And let's go ahead and actually dial up our values a bit. Let's try that. Oop. And then what we need to do is actually put down a shuffle node here and then get rid of that channel. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna put another defocus here on top of everything and just set that to maybe 12, maybe 33. So let's revisit the key here real quick. Let's bring down a color smear here. The color smear will help us with our edges a bit. And our mat is a little crunchy. There is a tool called the look up color, excuse me, color look up. And I'm gonna put that here before our pipe goes into the copy alpha. I'm gonna select alpha here, control A to hit those two points and then hit H. So now it's logarithmic and cleaned up the mat a bit. Let's revisit the racket. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is put down a color correct node. And if we pipe through that and then go to ranges and hit test, this takes a little bit of practice, but it's very helpful. We're gonna to wanna to expand our values here so they cover the areas we want it to cover. So 
the skin tones of the people in the background are a little too tan for the people in the foreground. We can help that a little bit by just creasing the gain here. Let's bring those values up. Bring down our contrast a little bit. And let's bring up our highlights just a tad. And then let's go ahead and bring down a blacks match node. If we double click it and hit the color picker tool and just hit the hair right here in the darker area, what that'll do is match the darkest area of the foreground plate to the background plate. All right, let's go ahead and play this through here. So you can see how we got here. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll provide the project file in my Patreon with a link down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.